Welcome to June's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is palindrome pairs. Given a list of unique words, return all the pairs of the distinct indices in a given list so that the concatenation of the two words, words I plus words J, is a palindrome. Straightforward problem. I don't think I need to explain any further. We just want to find every single pair in order that's going to form a palindrome. Now, how do we know something's a palindrome? Basically, the reversed word is the same as the word itself. And we can do that by having a two-pointer solution. Um, so at first, it looks like our constraints are fairly small. Maybe we can do this brute force. Just find every single pair, concatenate the two in order, and see if it's a palindrome. And if it is, add the indexes into our output. So let's begin by going with that approach. How we do that? Well, let's first write some sort of helper method called isPal, which will tell us whether this word itself is a palindrome or not. So we'll pass in a word as well as the start and end of what we're trying to check to see if it's a palindrome. I'll, mention, I'll talk about why we're doing that in a bit, but uh, this would just be while start is less than end. We'll check to see, look, is the beginning of our word not equal to the end that we're checking right now? And if it isn't, then we can immediately return false because this is not a palindrome. Otherwise, we're gonna increase our start and decrease our end. And we'll continue on until we get the middle. And if we can get to the middle, we return a true. So that'll be our little helper function to help us see whether the word is a palindrome or not. So if we were to do this straightforwardly, what would we do? We just do it in a nested for loop, right? We'd say length of words, get our output. And we'll say for i in range of n, and then for j in range of n. Let's calculate our candidate here, which would just be equal to words words i plus words j. Now, as long as these two indexes are not equal to one another, and we'll say is pal this candidate, passing the start and the length of the candidate minus one, then we'll, this means that these two aren't the same word and they form a, they can candidate to form a palindrome. So we'll add that to our output a list of i and j. And that would be it. We could go with this solution. Um, it should be fine for most test cases, but this reaches a time limit exception if I submitted it. And the reason for that is it's not really optimal. It's brute force. We end up becoming n squared times k because of our palindrome function here. So is there a way that we could make it better than that? Do we have to find every single pair? Is there any other way we can do it? Well, that makes it a little bit tricky because you need to figure out, could we, given a word, could we find out all possible words that we could add here to make this a palindrome? And that becomes pretty difficult. I shouldn't say all possible, but, but certain possible ones given our string here. So let's just think if we had the words AAA, what string could we add this to make it a palindrome? Well, the first case here is we could add a blank string to the beginning or the end, right? If it's a blank string and the word itself is a palindrome, that's a palindrome. So uh, if it's a blank string and the word is a palindrome, then we should, that's kind of like an edge case. We should add the two indices and, and we should add it both ways, right? Because whether we add it to the beginning here or the end, it doesn't matter. It's still a palindrome. Okay, so if we, if we see a blank string, that's one thing we'll do. We'll check all our words to see which ones are palindromes and add those to this index point, both sides. Now, second case, let's just say we have like A, B, C, D. What word can we add here to make it a palindrome? Well, obviously we can just add the reverse, right? We can say D, C, B, A. Just reverse this word and add that. That will make it a palindrome for sure. Uh, so if we just reverse the word, that also makes a palindrome. <clears throat> now, this is the hard part. Say that we had a word like AAABC or something like this. What word can we add to the beginning to make this a palindrome? So after doing some research, what I found is if we start at the beginning and check to see if this substring is a palindrome, so say that <clears throat> we're checking the first part, we can see that this is a palindrome already, right? Because it's just one word, one letter. Now the rest here, AABC, if we found the reversed part of this in our word list, 
we can put that like the word list in a hash. And if we see this word reversed inside the word list, so say that we see um, CBAA, that means we can add this part to the beginning and that will also make it a palindrome. No, that's not right. This would be B. Yeah, CBAA. This also makes it a palindrome, right? So one function we can do is like first check at the beginning, is this a palindrome? If it is, check to see if we find the reversed part of this next. Same here, is this a palindrome? Yes. Check to see if we can find the reversed part of this next. And just make sure that if we do find it, put that index point in front. We also want to do the opposite way, where say it was like CBAAA. We'll start like right here and check, hey, is this a palindrome? No. Nope. Okay, this is a palindrome, right? So that means, can we find the beginning part reversed in our word list? If we find a BC here, that means, yeah, we could add this part and make this a palindrome. So we're gonna have to do this K times every single um, index point and just check to see, can we find, is this up to this substring a palindrome? If it is, find the rest of the string backwards, whether it's in front or in the beginning and add that to our output. So those are kind of our three cases. So let's begin by first just taking care of the first edge case here. We'll go same thing for i in range of n. Let's first check to see if it's a blank string. And I'm going to make it a little easier. Say w equals words of i. Just make it easier to type. First thing we'll check to see is, is this a blank string? If it's a blank string, then we're just going to look through all the words in our, in our list and see if uh, any of them are palindromes. So for j in range of n, it's kind of the same thing. Um, we'll check to see, look, is if i does not equal j and is pal, let's pass in words j, pass in zero and pass in the length of words j minus one. Then let's add that to our output, the i and j. And we also want to do the opposite way, j of J and I. Now, once we're finished with this, we can actually just continue because everything else we don't care about. Like we know this string is blank. So the only possibilities is finding a word that's a palindrome. So we just end that part here. So that takes care of that first edge case. Now, what about the second edge case? Well, that's easy. We just need to reverse our word. So we can just do that by uh, getting our word and saying negative one, that'll make it reversed. If we find BW in our lookup, then we're gonna add that. And I just forgot, we need to make our lookup first. So lookup is just gonna be a, a hash with uh, for index value and word in enumerate words. We're gonna make the word, the key, and the index the value. Okay, so we have our lookup right here. So if BW in lookup, um, I should also mention and, lookup bw is not equal to, you know, the i that we're on. Well, then we'll also add that to our output and that's just gonna be i and lookup bw, right? So that, that one's easy. So we take care of that one. Okay, so now the hard part, we want to take care of these weird cases uh, where we're having like a, like bc, something like that. I'm sorry, cb plus and something like this. So to do this, what do we need to do? Okay, well, we're not gonna have to, we'll have to have another for loop. We'll say for, and we'll call it k in range of starting at one, because we don't care about it's like nothing. We want to at least check one substring. So for i to the uh, length of words, let's see, we're gonna check two things, we're gonna check starting with the beginning all the way to the end like this and we're going to start from like partially substring all the way to the end like that okay so let's first take care of the first thing we'll say uh let's see if is pal we're going to pass in um the word and we'll say starting from starting from i guess it would be we're going like this, starting from zero. Well, all the way to k minus one, I believe. 
Now, if we find that this part right here is a palindrome, we're going to check to see the rest of our word, reverse it, and see if that's in our lookup. So this is a palindrome, and we'll take our word uh, up to the kth character, up to the kth character, right? Yeah, because we're building up, and we're going to reverse it. So if this word is in our lookup, that means we found a pair. So then let's add that. We'll say, um, I'll put a pen, but make sure to add this part in the beginning here. So we'll get this word, let's say, look up this word and I. Finally, we want to also do the opposite way. So this would be is pal w. And this will begin with, uh, let me think. Not zero, but this will begin with K, I believe. And it will go to all the way to the end, which will just be the length of our word minus one. So if this is in our, or if this is a palindrome, then we want to get the word up to K here, reverse it. And if that's in our lookup, then we'll add that as well, but this time it's going to be I in front and this word or this index point for this word second. Okay, finally, that should have taken care of it. So we, we just return our output after this. Let's get rid of this. And let's see if that works. So, uh, okay, it looks like I'm, hmm. May I flip this? Wait, was that what it was before? Let me, uh... All right, so I think that's working. So let's go ahead and submit it. Oh, there we go. And accepted. So time complexity wise, it's going to be N times k squared because of this for loop with the k's. Uh, I know we do a n squared technically here one time, but because it's just once, well, depending on how many empty strings there are, but uh, I think we can ignore that one, like make it a plus n squared. So this does become more efficient and ends up becoming accepted. So that would be it. Now, the hardest part here is this, like I was able to get all the way up to here, but once we got to like this area, I had to like look it up because it was really, really hard to come up with this, but um, you know, if you can get even close, I think that's pretty good. Um, yeah, but otherwise don't feel bad because this is another very hard question. All right, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.